What's up guys and welcome to the Modern Ninja YouTube channel and it is my pleasure to introduce the first episode of a brand new series and podcast called Finding the Art in Combat. This podcast is all about martial arts, all aspects of it, but with a little bit of a twist. It's not just me talking to you guys on this podcast. It's actually me interviewing some of your favorite martial arts content creators on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. And if you have one that you really want me to have on this show, then tag them down in the comments below on wherever you're watching this podcast. And of course, if you like the whole concept as a whole, kick the crap out of that like button and make sure you follow for more. Now, with that said, I would like to introduce the amazing guest that we have today. Day. Ladies and gentlemen, drop a comment welcoming Daniel Kim. Uh, hello, my name is Daniel. Um, on TikTok, I'm Dan Trice TikTok. On Instagram, I'm Dan Trice Insta. And if you want to see my YouTube, which I don't really post anything on, it's Dan Trice YT. If you want to find any of my social media, it's Dan Trice yeah. social media. I like it. I, I like the uh, the uh, consistency. I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I found, like, if I if I am going to, like, keep doing social media stuff, I might as well stay consistent, right? Because then it's easy for people to search up, right? Exactly. You got you to gotta keep that, that brand recognition uh, going. I actually, so I actually initially planned this podcast being called uh, Marshall Talks. Like, I was going to use that name. And then I was researching, like, you and, and my fiance was helping me research, research like, your videos and, and look, figure out some interesting questions to ask you. And she was like, uh, DJ, you know he has a podcast called Marshall Talks already. I was like, no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to tell you during this live. So I, was like, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> but, like, we don't upload that much. And, like... It's just me and a friend talking because, like, we're very disorganized. <laughs> I, I listened to a little bit and I heard, heard episode three, um, and like, it's it's pretty good. I liked I liked it. I listened to it actually while I was researching you, just in the background. It was yeah. yeah, yeah. We we ha we have like a list of topics that we wanted to talk about and stuff, and like, you know, we did it pretty well, I think, and like. Like, obviously, like, it's not that very clean because we, um, like I said, it's very disorganized and we just kind of do it for fun. Like, right. whenever both of us have time. So it's kind of like just like a side project. So nothing too serious. Whenever you guys, whenever you guys feel like, whenever you guys can. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's cool. I, I like it. I like it. So, again, martial arts, it's what brings us all together, especially, you know, in the martial arts on TikTok. We're very, uh, <laughs> united in our struggles um but martial arts as a whole it requires a lot of discipline it requires a lot of dedication it's not the easiest thing to do. someone asks you is getting your black belt easy i'm sure no one that actually has their black belt would tell someone that is easy so with that said it does require some motivation and what is like the motivation that you had to start martial arts and what's the motivation you had that continues your training so my story is kind of, it's, it's different than most people that you'll find online. So the, the thing that's similar with a lot of people is I took martial arts because my parents made me. Because, you know, I'm, I'm Korean, Taekwondo, you know, we got we to gotta hold up the whole tradition, you know. So I did Taekwondo until I was 10, got my first degree black belt, and then I quit. Oof. I stopped doing martial arts completely throughout middle school. And throughout high school, I was like, martial arts is cool, you know, but I didn't do anything that serious with it at all. Just like every now and then I'd go to like a gym, hit a bag every once in a while. And that's it. Right. And I actually only recently got back into martial arts when I started university. Interesting. So three, four years ago is when I got back into it. And then that's when I actually really made all of my like martial arts growth. So it, it, it was kind of like, oh, I was saying it was kind of like because I took a break from martial arts, it was kind of like I was like missing something, you know, right. it was like I, I needed to do something, but then like I wasn't there. But then like because of that break, when I took martial arts again, it was kind of like I'm going to go into it. Like I, I'm going to you know, like head straight into it and then like. After that, I started to take it a lot more seriously. I joined my Taekwondo club at the university, did some stuff there for a bit. And then it was, I think, two years ago when I actually started TikTok, but it was only like 
a year ago when I started doing martial arts content. Right. What did you do before martial arts content? Uh, I switched niches quite a bit. One was just like some random stupid like crap posting. Then it was like I was trying to educate people on like issues with like Korea and like educating people on Korean culture. And then like I was like I saw someone say Joey and then infamous ninja. And I was I was like wait a minute I do martial arts this looks really fun right. <laughs> and then I found your page and I'm like yo there's like a community. So then like I started making more content based around that and like. I haven't said this yet, but like, I don't advertise my TikTok on Instagram. This is my personal Instagram. <laughs> so, was, so all my friends are going to see this and they're going to be like, what the hell is this kid doing? <laughs> but screw you guys, I have 43k. Screw you guys. <laughs> Honestly, wait, what are you at now? Uh, I'm 43.7k right now. Almost at that 50. Almost, almost at, that at that 50. Yeah, that's the goal that's for this month. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. Uh, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Um, many martial artists have, um, you know, different ways of training. There's a lot, especially on social media and stuff, a lot of self-taught people that don't, you know, live in an area with a good school nearby or stuff like that. And then there's a lot of other martial artists who are lucky enough to have a good school. I am one of those people. I grew up uh, in uh, several different states. We moved every two years when I was a kid, just going and I bounced school to school over the years um but with you i i've seen a lot of videos and pictures especially on instagram of you training in a, a gym with the name different on it i assume that's what the gym was called uh it's recently i found out that that's not necessarily the case <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but tell me what is it like to train at that gym do you enjoy it how long have you been there yada yada so i actually don't train at that gym anymore um, so that gym also has an interesting story. That's actually UFC gym. Mm. But because it went like bankrupt, so it just like got integrated as part of the other gym, right? Like attached to it. Right. So it's right. just like that gym plus. So <laughs> motion fitness plus, and then that's that gym. So that's it's not like an actual official like martial arts gym. They actually have trainers that are kickboxing teachers and stuff, but. Never really bothered taking classes. Um, I have really only had proper, like, official classes in Taekwondo. Interesting. Yeah, and a lot of my other stuuff is mostly self-taught. So, That's like, I, I've taken, like, one or two Kali classes. Right. And then, like, the rest is just kind of, like, just me doing my own research, studying the movement, and making sure I know why the movement happens. And that's the thing. A lot of martial arts can be... Like, the, I feel like with a lot of martial arts, once you understand how the body works, once you've been taught how the move, how, how to do those basic movements, the styles are just different ways to use those same basic movements. Mm -hmm. Like, a punch is always going to be a punch, right? Yeah, yeah. No matter what style you do, if you're a boxer, you do taekwondo, a punch, you make the same fist, you, 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 a punch is a punch. And the styles are more how you implement those moves mm -hmm. that's how you how you you know learn the basics yeah yeah and like i found that like of the reason why a lot of people when they do self-taught stuff why they don't why they aren't successful is because they don't ask why the movement is done mm -hmm. they just copy the movement and then they can't ever like do anything similar to it after that because they're like they don't understand the reasoning behind that movement you know so it's yeah. like when you do like a Taekwondo punch or like a Tang Soo Do like, you know, horse stance punch, it's like, they're like, oh, that'll never work in real life. But it's like, you're not supposed to do that in a fight, right? It's like, it's like right. the brief, the second you understand like why they teach it like that and like the little simple movements behind it, then you can start like integrating that into other things as well. And then that's how you successfully self-teach yourself in martial art. Right. You have to, you have to understand the, the movements and you have to be self-aware enough to notice when you're doing bad habits yeah super easy at least in my experience it is super easy to just kind of get a bad habit kind of ignore it and the one thing that makes you know not being self-taught easier is that you can have someone else there to point out when you're doing something wrong or when you need to change uh anything like something someone's there to call you out on it if you're not and if you're not able to call yourself out it makes teaching yourself hard and nearly impossible honestly yeah, yeah and 
honestly is why having a phone is so nice. You can film yourself doing it, and then you can compare it to other footage, right? So like, like you have to be self-aware. Like, if, if I, am I doing this wrong, then you have to fix it yourself. If you're being self-taught, right? Yeah. That's that, and, and that's the thing. That's that's my advice. And I'm sure you get a lot of people with the content that you make specifically and how you go about creating your content. You answer a lot of people's questions, um, which is very unique to your like videos as far as the difference between us martial arts creators. You 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 answer people's questions. None of us really like we do not really not in the same way. You're it's very unique to you, and so I'm sure you get questions like that a lot. Even if you don't necessarily answer all of them, I'm sure you do. Uh, so I'm sure you had an idea that this question would come up, uh, especially with some of the recent videos that you and I have both done. Yeah. Um, do you think Taekwondo is an effective martial art? And more importantly, because I already know this answer, I already know. But more importantly, why do you think it gets so much hate from being useless and ineffective? So second at second uh, the answer to the second part of that question, Olympics. <laughs> the Olympics. Oh is why. Dude, dude. <laughs> I, time out, time out. I literally i I'm this is my last so I, I'm I'm scheduling out my videos, right? And this is my last day of editing for a video that it has the topic why is Taekwondo use or why do people think Taekwondo is useless? That's the premise of the video. And that's the top reason I, I said like, oh my god. This is the Olympics. This is the Olympics. Like, okay, Taekwondo actually needs ITF in the Olympics. Like, actually, they need ITF in the Olympics. Explain what that is, because a lot of people... So, WT Taekwondo, that uh, used to be called WTF, but people changed because, you know, WTF. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, WT Taekwondo is what you would see in the Olympics. You know, that full chest armor, head gear, and then the leg fencing that you see all the time. And ITF Taekwondo is, the best way to put it, it's point fighting and you know like karate style kumite right where it's like point fighting right it's that and then aspects of kickboxing as well so pretty much it's kickboxing but emphasis on kicks over boxing and In that's what itf is that's a good that's a good way to put it that's a good way to, to put it i think mm -hmm. uh i think if people saw that um i know when i used to compete i used to do points fighting and i used to do continue <clears throat> fighting and those things, I think people can see a lot more usefulness out of. Mm -hmm. Kind of like it's kind of like um, like a <clears throat> pencil, right? The Olympics for for Taekwondo is kind of like seeing just the lead of the pencil and being like, "What am I supposed to do with this?" With and when in reality, it's a whole pencil that you're missing out on on how to use it. You're just yeah. seeing a sliver that makes you know no sense out of context. Um, so yeah, I'm. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> like, well, I mean, like, here's the thing though. Even if you only do WT Taekwondo, you'll be surprised at how accurately those Olympic athletes can hit. Like, oh yeah, out of nowhere. And like, people like see that leg fencing, and they're like, "Oh, you never do that in a real fight." But it's like, if you see how much effort that goes into just even leg fencing, their basic kick to a regular person is gonna be like lightning the speed. speed. Yeah, the speed alone, they could kick someone before that normal person could throw a punch. Like no joke, they could kick times before you can get one good shot on them, like guaranteed. And people don't, don't realize, honestly, one of the things with sports is that people have a hard time transferring the sport professionals to reality because like take basketball for instance. If you take the worst basketball player, you know what? I'm gonna look at that. Hang on, time out, time out. Give me one second. I have my computer right there. One of the worst is Dennis Smith Jr. I have, I've never heard of him, so he, he can't. <laughs> but he he's, he plays for the he was the point guard for the Knicks last year, right? If you take him and put him in any local gym, he's gonna school all of them. Yeah. The level that they're playing at is so much <laughs> higher than the average person. He'll school every he'll school the best person at your gym every single time. And and martial arts pro, pro martial arts is the same way. These guys that are kicking at lightning speed are going to be so much faster than the average person. It's 
no comparison. And like, what is? I've talked about this before on my TikTok, but it's the Dunning Kruger effect, which is where people have this cognitive bias where they overestimate their abilities. So, what people don't realize is like, without that like basic martial arts training, people are gonna punch like this, <laughs> and they think they're gonna punch like that, but they're gonna punch like this. Dude, I did. I just did a video making fun of that. It was like you know the trend where it was like people punching uh, to the beat or whatever. I just mm -hmm. I just did a video a little bit ago, just being like your expectation combo reality, just kind of swinging. Yeah. Oh, and like the the best like example of that is watch any street fight on YouTube, <laughs> and people are gonna swing like this, wild swinging. Yeah. Wild and that's the thing. They don't realize it when they're in it, but everyone can realize it when they're out of it. And people that think they can fight have probably never been in a real fight or or they fought, you know, in high school with some other high school in some kid fight and don't actually realize how it actually works. Because if everyone <laughs> doesn't matter, of course you can win. If everyone's doing this, yeah. it starts throwing, you know, straights and crosses that knows what they're doing everything changes yeah and like yes taekwondo like wt taekwondo you don't use punches as much but you still punch in the olympics like olympic rule set allows you to punch and that being said it doesn't matter like they can do average people punching but then they can do olympic level kicking <laughs> exactly, exactly. So it's like it's like average joe level here but then it's average joe level plus olympic level kicking like and people it's, it's always a plus. The average Joe isn't even fit. Like, in America, the average person is not fit. So if you are fit, you're automatically above. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh my gosh. Uh, I could talk. Okay, let's move on to the next question. <laughs> we need to take a step away from martial arts. We're, we're too passionate about this. <laughs> I talked about that for so long. So take a step away from martial arts. Um... And it's easy for people watching you or, you know, other social media people and re not realizing that you have a lives outside of, of what you talk about on your, on your channel. For us, we do martial arts. And, it's, and it, I, at least I've seen a lot of people don't realize that we may do other things outside of just doing yeah. martial arts. So what do you do in your free time when you're not either making content or training? What do you do? Um... Well, I work right now. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm working part time at my uh, parents' like place right now because, like, uh, because I'm still in university, I still have to take classes. So, um, just over the summer, I've been staying with my parents just because it's it's cheaper. It's cheaper that way. I'm, I'm, I'm heading back up to my university right like tomorrow. So, I mean, I've just been working outside of it, and then if I'm not training, then I'm usually just playing games with my friends. I'm not gonna oh. lie. <laughs> what games do you play? Uh, I play a, like, we played a lot of The Forest. You know that game? I, I've, I've not played it. I've seen it. So, what you need to do right now is get a ton of TikTokers and play that together, because that shit is so much fun. <laughs> I, you saw, I wanted to get a, a bunch of TikToks to play some game together, like, yeah. uh, like Among Us or something. I think it'd be fair. Yeah, no, but I think I think if if you're gonna do that, the forest is definitely a top pick because you can play up to eight players. Okay. And it's pretty much just like eight people trying to do a like a survival like thing, like so like camping, you build stuff right. while you fight off cannibals. That's so... <laughs> I'm so down. Yeah, yeah, uh, that'd be fun. Yeah, but um, I also like I'm I'm trying to get into Valorant, but I'm garbage at it. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. I play games for the memes most of the time. I'm not really good at a lot of games. I'm good at, like, Minecraft. I really like Minecraft. I'm good at it. But I play, like, Rainbow Six Siege. Me and my buddies play Rainbow Six Siege or Call of Duty all the time. And I like trash. Like, absolutely trash. But I like memeing. I like doing the meme strats. And that's how that's how I have fun. And I'm trying to get uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I can stream it. Because that's what I wanted. That'd I also awesome. like, play, like, a lot of single-player games as well. And like that stuff, like um, Sniper Elite. Uh, I play some. I played Fallout Four for a bit. Um, I played. Have you played? Have you played the uh, what is it? The Plague Story. I haven't. Oh, that's a good game. You should try it out. 
yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll have to look it up. I'll, I will yeah. absolutely. Because yeah. I love it. I just, you know, with mm-hmm. everything going on, I don't always have the, the most time. No, but uh, one of my favorite game series of all time is Resident Evil. Okay. So I play a lot of that. Um, I'm, I'm one of the only people that legitimately enjoyed Resident Evil 6. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that like, sir? Like one of the, one of the like a super hard and long game. It's not super hard, but it's really long. Like there's four separate campaigns that you have to play through. <laughs> four separate camp. That's yeah. wild. Yeah, it's 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 fun though. I, I enjoyed it a lot, and you can play with your friends as well. Uh, the comment that just popped up reminded me Warframe. That's another game I wanted to play with a bunch of martial artists because warframe you get to like build characters with some stabs and swords and all that stuff um warframe is one of my favorite recent games or favorite games recently i should say it's pretty old i should um, try it because I, I remember i opened up warframe for a bit but my like laptop was not good enough for it but i got a new one so i could probably run it now so it, i'm pretty sure it's still free so yeah. hey, jump on that if you can um but so going back to martial arts, now that we've taken a, a, a slight step away to calm down, as many people know, with my stuff, I love weapons. Like martial arts, um, the weapon aspect of martial arts is one of my favorite aspects of, you know, training. I absolutely love it. It's what I post all the time. If you watch my page for two seconds, you'll notice that part. Um, and when I was uh, when I was scrolling through your page... I noticed that you do like weapons, and no TikTok is kind of iffy with <laughs> with what weapons you're allowed to use. However, um, it does it does you do have some good content on there, specifically with your your knife uh, and your nunchucks. Is are those your favorites? Why why what draws you to nunchucks? Um, honestly, that's because I'm broke. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, because I'm, I'm a broke uni student, okay? And nunchaku costs like 23 bucks. <laughs> and uh, the knives, I actually got them as a gift from one of my followers. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Sa- Sarah. Shout out to Sarah, you know? That's awesome. Okay, yeah. But, uh, she got me with those for a gift, like off my Amazon wish list. And then, like, to be honest, like, like, I, I love swords. I want a sword so bad, but they're so expensive. <laughs> they're so expensive. Like an XMA oh, sword is like good sword worth getting oh, it. It's, yeah, yeah. Like like I, I want to get one just to train with, or even like a spark foam one because those are fun to play around with. But like like I said, it's just like it's cheaper if you just get nunchaku and knives. And like Absolutely. yeah, and to be honest, like knives are like one of the most fun things to just play around with because you're like. Because, like, when it's a sword, it's big, right? And, like, you can spin it at a more controlled rate. Right. Because it's, like, a bigger one, so you know, like, where everything's moving. But with a knife, if you do a slightly bit too hard or a slightly bit too light, it's going to land on the wrong side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, I, I like the amount of, like, level of precision that you need to be able to juggle knives. And then Chaku is just, like, Bruce Lee, bro. Bruce Lee. <laughs> Bruce Lee, bro. Bruce Lee. <laughs> No, I see. I have personally. You don't see me do a lot of nunchuck stuff because I have a very. I have plenty of nun. I have like four sets of nunchucks, but I have a such a strong love hate relationship with them. Like, I I call them for anyone that watches my content. They've heard me call them the devil's weapons before because they. Uh, I've heard you say that. <laughs> wanting to hurt you. That's that's how that works. Mm-hmm. They work, like you know what. I'm gonna hit him in the head today. <laughs> I so, get that. I get that. You know, and, and it's honestly another reason why I'm using foam nunchaku because I'm a wuss and I'm in Canada as well, so you can't get actual nunchaku here. Really? Yeah, they're illegal. I don't know why, but they're illegal <laughs> here. But but they don't care if you buy a katana from a that, shopping mall. That sounds backwards. Yeah. You know, like, whatever. I wish TikTok was like that. Shoot. <laughs> I wish TikTok was like that. You know. I mean. Dude, oh my, I was so mad. Oh my god. I'm bad from posting on my main right now because there's a freaking community <laughs> guidelines from a month ago. <laughs> so hold up, time out, time out. This leads perfectly, perfectly into the next uh, question. 
What are some of the hardest struggles that you as a creator and as a creator on TikTok have uh, come across throughout your journey? It's TikTok itself. Like that's, that's, that's everyone's biggest obstacle is TikTok itself. Like, dude, dude, yeah. yes. Amen to that, like, man. Like, like, I thought I had it hard, but honestly, like, you took, like, that biggest loss, and I was like, this is crazy. Yeah. Because, dude, I, that's... Dude, I'm, I'm still, I'm still, like, trying to fight it. I'm still emailing up the chain. I'm about to email, like, a straight-up CEO soon just to try and get some notice. Because, like, every, it's to the point where every martial arts creator on TikTok has to have a backup account. Yeah, yeah, and, us, and some of us have multiple backups. Like you have multiple backups. Yeah, like I so have. Sean I have, has multiple backups. Sean, he told me uh, he has seven. <laughs> I mean, that's the only way to do it, though. Uh, honestly, and that's it's crazy. I wish it wasn't the case because, like, there are some amazing martial arts creators out there. Whether it's uh, Dan, or, Dan, oh my gosh, I'm looking straight at you. Whether it's Ben or Michelle. Uh, there's there is a bunch of amazing martial arts creators out there, but it's getting to the point where people are like scared to post stuff. Yeah, I, I still haven't posted enough. I probably could get away with a sword video on my new account. Still haven't posted a single one though. Yeah, uh, yeah, and like like here's the thing though. I heard people with lightsabers are also getting like their stuff taken down too. Uh, yep. And, like, it, it's crazy, though, because, like, I remember Ben posted that one video where he's, like, I'm scared to post what I love doing. Yeah. And it's, like, that's crazy, though, because, like, I, I've made this video, like, on my backup, where it's, like, TikTok, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but TikTok lets people, like, post, like, literally, like, softcore, like, P-O-R-N. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 TikTok, TikTok goes, can, you can find straight up not safe for work content on Yeah. Yeah, like straight up. And then like they're like getting millions of views and millions of likes. And then even the community guideline says none of that. None of that's allowed, right? And then oh Jeremy Kicks posts a kicking video. And that goes <laughs> down. But then it's like, you, like but here's the thing no. though. Here's the thing though. Children and minors can learn martial arts, like public classes. That exists. But they're not allowed to do the I other stuff. How to do tricks with swords. Yeah. The same ones that I use. Like yeah. just for that. And it's it's just it's why I like I I don't know I don't know what you've done, but I've I've emailed them pictures of the weapon, pictures of where I got them, my certifications, because like I have my instructor certification. I sent that to them. They're like, you have to be a professional. I am a professional. I'm literally paid to teach karate or tongue to know. And it's just like no, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Just look, look at the sketch over there <laughs> with that martial arts tag. I mean, like, like you know, by this one, you'd think, like, they'd be okay with people. Like, here's the thing, though. People post, like, eagle lifting and, like, power lifting all the time. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's, that's just as, if not more dangerous than mm -hmm. spinning around a fake sword. Every time I see a power lifter lifting weights, like, especially when they um, do the squat lifts, mm -hmm. I'm like, Oh, don't drop it on your knees. Don't break your knees. Don't break your knees. Yeah. <laughs> or like, don't throw out your back. Yeah. Like, straight up, I, I am concerned that they're going to pop something. But yeah. And like, oh. here's the thing, though. Like, there oh. are power lifters that do get their, like, stuff, like, taken down. Because, you know, it is a dangerous thing. And like, that, I get it. But there's, like, an overwhelming, like, bias against martial arts creators. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Compared to everything else. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm not, you know, hashing these your if your niche is powerlifting or if you if you post thirst traps go for it You're yeah, yeah. like 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 go for it like like for i have people, no issue with like anybody posting their stuff i, I just have issues with the con like community guidelines yeah i have i have, my my issue is 100 percent with tiktok hating on martial arts not yeah. not with other creators doing their thing i have no problem with other creators yeah 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 like what, what's her face nikita dragon yeah yeah like, like I, I use her as an example a lot. Anyway, but like, it's like, the content she posts is like, it's her, her account is verified. She is a public account that's accessible to minors. And then she's posting that kind of stuff. And like, go ahead, you, you go ahead and post that. But none of her stuff ever gets like banned. 
Yeah. But then, like, I like if, pick up a plastic I, knife. I, I pick I, up I, a plastic knife and I wet. throw it up. There, are, it's to the point where I've I've duetted some, um, I've duetted and stitched some bigger TikTokers who just like got a sword for their video. Like, I think like mm -hmm. Mr. B or something did a video with a sword, yeah. and I duetted his video, and my video got taken down. <laughs> I was like, dude, I mean, like, I, I guess it's like, if you're verified, then it's like, you're a professional, right? That, that's not the case at all. Yeah. Because I don't know, um, there was a video I saw a little bit ago that I got tagged in, and it was a video of people, just some random, like this random old lady and this dude that bought this knife that was the CO2 knife, where you'd stab and it shoots out CO2 at the tip, which is illegal to use in most places of the world just mm -hmm. legally used but they were just blowing stuff up and in the comments you would read people miners everyone being like oh i want that i wonder what it does to people i wonder what that would do to flesh like but a professional who knows what they're doing doesn't teach that and actually like cares about martial arts as a whole nah too dangerous yeah yeah too dangerous uh so continuing so continuing on the whole social media stuff, uh, growing, especially for me, af especially after my recent hit of losing half a million, that one hurt. Um, but I still want to to grow, and even now, even more now, more than ever, uh, I want to grow my YouTube and I want to grow my Instagram, these other platforms, so I continue to do what I want to do, what I like doing, without having to worry about the TikTok guidelines. So, is do you have any plans as far as the future for your content and brand do you want to you know grow it to to something bigger do you just kind of want to do it on your free time just to have fun what is what does that look like to you um honestly i have no clue like i i honestly would love to do something with it but i just don't know what i can do with it <laughs> like i i'm gonna be busy like doing a part-time job when I get back up to my university, doing university courses. So it's, I'm not I'm probably not going to be able to post as much as I usually do. Right. But hopefully I can get like, maybe like some branded content just because so, like some, like maybe even like a sponsorship program with somebody, because then I could like focus a bit more on it and just like save up money, I guess. No, but, that's, that's definitely the way to go. Mm -hmm. I think uh, my biggest help has been Century and mega knife they're they're like they basically just like uh sponsor my 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 sales more or less so it's like whenever i do a video reviewing a weapon or something like that if people buy it using my link or my discount code they give me 10 percent of what that really like helps yeah. uh give me more time to work on this kind of thing and like here's the thing though like i've been contacted by century before and like i got my collie sticks from century and I got a kick paddle from Century. And like, the, I, I want to do the affiliate marketing thing, like what you're doing, right? But they said that they don't have any affiliate close to Canada right now because I'm Canadian. If I was in the States, then I'd probably do Creator Fund and Century affiliate codes, right? But I'm in Canada and we can't have anything. <laughs> that would make it a lot harder. I am, yeah. no doubt. No doubt that would make it a lot harder. Mm -hmm. But. No, I do. I do hope you uh, you keep continue to grow and you know have your uh, your success and find a way to creatively use it in Canada. Because I know, yeah, yeah. Particularly that not. I'm lucky enough to be in Texas where mm -hmm. you could carry a broadsword in your yeah. back, <laughs> reach to the mall if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah. That's that's, that's something I've actually seen. <laughs> it's, it's wild here. There's no laws here, but. Um, uh, I'm sure it's got to be a challenge in, in Canada. But lastly, moving on to the final question, uh, unless you have anything else you wanted to talk about, but what are some tips you have for anyone starting or wanting to get into martial arts as a whole? Okay, um, so this one. is one that I've always preached. It's don't take recommendations from other people on what to take. Take what you want to take because I'm always going to say this, even if you have the world's best MMA coach, but your heart isn't into MMA, you're not going to get anything out of it. Yep. But you really want to do, let's just say, Wing Chun, the art that gets like crapped on everywhere. But you really want to do it. And you have like an okay teacher, 
you're going to get a lot more out of it than if you're going to take an MMA class that you don't want to do. Yeah. Because back to, you know, how we started this conversation, it requires motivation. It requires dedication. You're not going to get anywhere in any martial art if you're not motivated on your own for whatever reason to do it. Um, so, no, that is that is a fan point. Um, make sure you, you, you do what you want to do, not what you... Not what everyone else thinks is the best or is yeah, yeah. or and what if you are gonna learn it for a more practical reason, go in it with a practical mindset. Don't just like like I know you have to listen to the instructor, but you should also take what they say with a grain of salt. Like if if your instructor's teaching you gun disarms and he's like saying like you have to do this and then this and then this, then it's not gonna work. A disarm like that should be quick. You shouldn't have multiple steps. It should just be keep the barrel away from you and yeah. then quick snap. And and that's the thing. Having the thing, we're as adults and especially this is hard for kids, but especially as adults that are training, you're people are human. People make mistakes. Yeah. And so you have to make sure you're not only learning the style or learning well, but you also have to make make sure you're critically thinking about what you're learning, how it works, mm -hmm. where or where it won't work, which is honestly yeah. important to know than to know when something will work. Yeah, yeah. Um, but those those are kind of the things that you have to just be aware about when you're jumping into to martial arts, especially in the beginning. I taught a lot of adults because um, I used to teach primarily children, and their and their parents would come in a lot for for like family classes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Every single time I had a parent that used to do martial arts as a kid. They were like, oh, this doesn't work, this doesn't matter, this doesn't work. And so I'm like, okay, it's all about, you know, how you think about it. Because we can yeah. teach kids these big movements that help them learn. But if you were to attack me, it'd go real different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, it's, it's uh, like that whole, like, when you block a Taekwondo, it's like this, like this. But it's like, in real life, you wouldn't, like, do this or like, this. It'd be this. Or, like, yeah, it'd be this. quick. Yeah be the same principle you get the principle out there but you're not doing you know we used to kids <laughs> and you have a spoon you're gonna scoop the ice cream and dump it on your head yeah no you're not doing all of that yeah yeah it, it's gonna be quick movements and it's just you have to think about how to apply a movement exactly so that's that's where it comes to the whole why right like i always tell people like if you're gonna do martial arts ask why for every single movement that you do it's like why do you punch like this why do we need to twist our knee in when we throw a straight or like whatever, right? And it's like the reason you throw your like the reason you twist your knee in when you throw a straight, it's because you want to initiate that momentum and you want to twist your hips into it, right? And that's how you throw a punch. But then like people are like, oh, twist knee in, punch, that's it. But like you have to know why it happens. Then you exactly. can start moving more efficiently and you can minimize movement so you don't waste energy, right? Why is the key to making any style work? What is well, so? Oh, are we talking in like a practical sense? Yeah, like, in a, in a practicality, I understand why you do something is the key to making anything work. Yeah, yeah, why you do something is the key to making anything work. So, like, even with like Tai Chi, there's like, like people like I, I do like acknowledge that like Tai Chi these days is definitely more for like just general fitness and exercise, but even then, like, a lot of its movements are grounded in traditional like combat Tai Chi. So, like, when you think of the movement, it's like you do that big wavy motion and stuff, right? But it's like, you have to think why. The second you think, start asking yourself why that movement is there, then you start thinking of different possibilities of how you can use that movement. Right. So it's like, you, you see a roundhouse kick done by a Taekwondo person, and you're like, why does Taekwondo do it more snappy? And why does Muay Thai do it more straight-legged, right? And why do they do drive, and why is it a snap, right? But then you start asking yourself why they do that, and then you realize, Taekwondo does snap kicks because they they emphasize speed over power because they think that speed equals power, right? But Muay Thai is more like the reason you drive through it is because you want to break through the target, but at the same time, it's like you want to, like, because you kick with the shin in Muay Thai, you have more surface area, so you can do more bigger movements, right? You can do those those big eye breaks and calf breaks. And yeah, like exactly, yeah. So then, like, you start asking yourself why. So it's like, why is it a Muay Thai we kick with our shins? Because it's the sh then you know it's the strongest bone. It's the right. strongest bone in your leg, and you have a bigger surface area to hit with. That's why you hit with the shin. 
and then you ask yourself why is it that you kick with like the little joint like between your foot and like your leg in taekwondo that's because if it's because when when you do your kick it's at the tip so that's where it gets the most speed and momentum and that's how you get the most power out of it and, and now you understand like how you can use for different targets yeah you're, yeah low your low kick in 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 muay thai for example is going to the thigh your yeah. low kick in taekwondo or tong sudo is going to the knee yeah right you're not going for the same thing you're not the target's not the same you're not using mm-hmm. like a hammer on a screw you're not doing the same Yeah exactly and like that's why you need to ask yourself why in martial arts and like I'm always going to say first pick the style you want to do don't listen to anybody else then when you do the style you want to do ask yourself why you do those movements or like why you do certain things in certain situations and then you start exploring more like I guess a wider variety of things Yep yep absolutely abs couldn't agree more but That is all I have for you. Thank you so much for uh for joining. This uncut uh live will be for those of you watching and those of you watching. This uncut live will be here on my Instagram forever. So if you want to go check it out, just go to my IGTV and it'll be there. You can check it out and you can check out the one next week when we record it. Speaking of, if you are watching this uh and want to watch um the next recording of the next episode you can actually watch that right now like today um for you guys watching on YouTube I'll you can watch that today cuz it will be with me and Alex having fun answering questions and just having a good time uh Dan thanks for joining thank you for um for talking with me it's been fun i hope you had fun yeah dude that was a lot of fun <laughs> if you have any <laughs> stuff that you want to do like for bigger stuff you know like if you have like a feature episode with multiple creators and stuff bro hit me up bro I have, like martial arts talking i can do that all day <laughs> <laughs> absolutely All right guys, so I really hope you enjoyed this podcast and like I said, if you want to watch more, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next episode which is going to be going live next week. And if you are actually watching or listening this the day it goes live, then we're actually going to be recording the next episode live on my YouTube channel. So if you want to hang out with me and be part of the live recording for episode 2, Check out my Instagram links down in the comment section or in the description below. And for you listeners, it's going to be modern underscore ninja 232. Y'all, I want you to have an amazing day. And remember that my name's DJ Moore. This is the Modern Ninja. And I'm out. Bye.